Hey there, this is MathCamp321, and in this video we're going to talk about direct proportion and the exponential growth and decay model. Let's take a look at our first example. Suppose the rate of change of y is proportional to y. Write and solve the corresponding differential equation. So the rate of change in a calculus course means derivative. We want to find the rate of change of y, and we're going to find this rate with respect to time. So what I'm going to say for the left side of my differential equation is going to be dy dt. And it says it's proportional to y itself. Now, when you have a, a question in which something is proportional to something else, we're going to use this variable k, which serves as something called the constant of proportionality. So uh, the change of y is proportional to y itself. So I'm going to say dy dt is equal to ky or k times y. Now in my next step, I'm going to separate variables, getting all the y's with dy and all of the t's with dt. Now remember that k is just going to be a constant of proportionality. So k is really just a constant. So in my separating the variables, I'm going to end up with 1 over y dy equals k dt. In my third step, I'm going to introduce the integration symbol to both sides. On the left side, when we find the antiderivative of 1 over y, we get the natural log of y. Now technically, there's supposed to be an absolute value around that y, but in an earlier video we discussed why we don't need it. Now, the antiderivative of a constant k with respect to t is just going to be kt plus c. Now on the left hand side, my implied base is an E. When I go to my next step, I'm going to do a schwing. And I'm going to say that E to the KT plus C is equal to Y. Now I'm just going to do a flip flop so that my variable Y is on the left hand side. Now focusing on the right hand side, I'm going to express my exponential expression as the product of two powers of base E. Now, e to the c, both of these values are just constants, so when I raise one to the other, it's still just going to be a constant. And I would rather address my constant in the simplest way possible. So instead of calling it e to the c, I'm just going to rename this as c sub 2. So my final rewrite is going to be y equals c sub 2 times e to the kt. And this right here is going to be your exponential growth or decay model. Let's go to the next slide where we'll talk a little bit more about this growth decay model. So now we're on slide number two. The result from slide one, y equals c times e to the kt, is known as the exponential growth and decay model, where y is the function that's changing over time. And usually this function is going to describe some real world application. C is going to be the initial value. This means what is the value when time is equal to zero? K is the constant of proportionality. And it's never going to be given to you. It's going to be something that you're going to have to solve for. But it's really important to realize that K is a constant. Growth will occur when this value of k ends up being positive or larger than zero. Decay is going to occur, on the other hand, when k is less than zero. Let's go to slide three and take a look at a more challenging example. Question number two states, suppose the rate of change of y is proportional to y. When t equals zero, y equals two. When t equals 2, y equals 4. What is the value of y when t equals 3? So to start, let's look at the very first sentence. Suppose the rate of change of y is proportional to y. Well, we've seen this sentence already, and this indicates our exponential growth or decay model. y equals c times e to the kt. So let's start by writing that. The next thing I'm going to do is take all of these data points that they gave us and organize them in a table of values. Instead of an xy chart, I'm going to make a ty chart. 
And in the end, what I'm trying to figure out is what is going to be the value of y when t is equal to 3. So to start, I'm going to take my first data point and I'm going to plug that in to our exponential growth or decay model. So I'm going to say that y is equal to 2 when t is equal to 0. Simplifying this, I get 2 is equal to c times e to the 0. And of course, e to the 0 is just the number 1. So what this really tells me is that c is equal to 2. Now I'm going to substitute this 2 into the growth decay model. And I'm going to go to my second data point, this time allowing y to be 4 and t to be 2. Now my objective is going to be to isolate k. The first step that I'm going to do is divide both sides by 2. My next move will be to take the natural log of both sides. Focusing on the right hand side, I'm going to use the power rule for logs, bringing the 2k down in front. Now we all know that the natural log of e is just 1, so that really doesn't play any role. And finally, I can isolate k by multiplying both sides by 1 half. So now I have c and I have k, and this is going to give me a much clearer picture of what my exponential growth decay model is going to be. So I'm going to write that model again, this time substituting in for both c and k. So here's my model with all the variables substituted in for. Now I need to answer the question when t is 3. So I'm going to take that value of 3 and substitute it in for t, which is in the exponent. Now it's very important that you don't multiply the argument of the natural log times 3 and say that it's the natural log of 6. You have to think of the expression inside of the parentheses as a chunk. Now what you can do is if you wanted to, you could multiply the 1 half in front and the 3. That's fine because those are both just constants. But the ln of 2, that's its own little entity and you can't insert things into that. So 1 half of 3 is 3 halves. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now that 3 halves that's in front, if we use the power rule for logs backwards, I can allow that to become the exponent or the power of the argument 2. Now there's a property of logs that we recently reviewed such that if this base here and this base here lined up, if there was a match there, then the answer would just be the argument. So we have this 2 in front, and then all of this turns into 2 to the 3 halves. So there were many times that I could have just reached for the calculator and gotten the answer. I could, have, I could have actually started that way back up here. But I'm just trying to simplify as much as I can before I reach for that calculator. So if I wanted to, I could do one last thing. And I, since I'm multiplying powers of the same base, I can retain the base and add the exponents. The exponent here is 1. 1 plus 3 halves is the same as 2 halves plus 3 halves, which is 5 halves. So I could go to my calculator and I could type this in, or I can think of that 5 halves as 2.5. And I'm going to reach for my calculator now. I think I've simplified just about as much as I can. And when I do that, I get this answer of about 5.656. So when t is 0, y is 2. When t is 2, y is 4. And when t is 3, y is 5.656. Six. And this idea of having to first solve for C and then solve for K is going to be a very common theme in the rest of the problems. Let's take a look at the next slide.